we redesigned this board, we shrunk the overall size. So the number of pieces on the panel tripled. We reduced the layers from 12 layers to eight layers, um, which is great all on its own. But I think even more interesting is we reduced the lamination cycles from three lamination cycles to one. So just a huge simplification um, in that design, which of course increases the reliability. Hi everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to the On Track podcast. Today we have three senior executives from a Silicon Valley startup called Veritech. They're going to tell you about the technology that they're rolling out that's groundbreaking and will allow you to design with sub 25 micron lines. You're really going to enjoy this conversation. So lean in, enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to All Team's On Track podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, hello, Harris. Hello, Mike. Hello, Tara. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hello, Judy. Hi, Judy. Hello, Judy. So um, I heard you just got done with a tour de force sort of a Southern California and you've been busy. And so I thought it'd be a great time to touch base with you and find out all the latest from Averitech. So Harris, why don't we start with you? Can you give us a a brief introduction of you and your background? Um, And um, as the CEO of this company, sort of... um, a little bit about this technology and where you see it going. Sure. Thank you, Judy, for the opportunity. Um, Averitech is, as you mentioned, a Silicon Valley company. Uh, we've actually got very deep roots in Silicon Valley. Um, we were founded out of SRI International, which has been in Silicon Valley since the 1940s and has spawned a lot of um, great Silicon Valley companies. Um, our um, company is really based on uh, material science and manufacturing processes that we license to printed circuit board manufacturers to allow them to leapfrog ahead of everybody else in terms of circuit density to get the absolute highest circuit density anywhere and effectively make them limited by only their photolithography capabilities. Uh, So that's us in a nutshell. Uh, My background is mostly in semiconductors, a little bit in software. Um, Averitech is my first printed circuit board company. I've been at uh, Averitech for about three years. So um, I really feel the circuit board industry, um, the manufacturing of circuit boards has a lot of opportunities in it, a lot of places where there's room for improvement and advancement. So I'm pretty excited to be in this position today. Well, I couldn't agree with you more in that I've been saying for a long time that from the design engineers I worked with, we were sort of hitting our heads against the ceiling, you know, and and that ceiling was really at the PCB manufacturing limitations that we were that we were hitting. Um, Mike, you're the COO there at Averitech. Can you tell us a little bit about um, MSAP and ASAP? I know you have your own set of acronyms there and tell us a little bit about what that means. And, um, and then maybe we can dive in a little bit to the subtractive technology. Sure, Judy. Thanks. If you look at MSAP, ASAP and subtractive all three together, you'll see the subtractive is a process that's been around for many years. Most PCB shops are very comfortable with running it. MSAP is a technology that's being used a lot around the world for finer features than uh, what they're getting with subtractive. Uh, and then ASAP is the process that Averitech, standing for Averitech Semi-Additive Process, is using to promote sub-25 micron trace in space and also higher density integrated, cir- uh, higher density printed circuit boards for uh, the printed circuit board market. So subtractive is what we've done traditionally, right, right, where you take copper and you etch away to create the traces where ASAP is building them up, correct? correct? And so the 
the technology. Tell us a bit about sort of the catalyst or the technology that um, Averitech has created to, uh, to enable So that. Averitech's technology is liquid metal ink, where it's applying a catalyst that's extremely thin but extremely dense. And that allows us to deposit electroless metals like copper, extremely thin and extremely dense. That allows us to build up the additive part of the circuit, which is what's left behind after we etch away the very thin electroless copper that we've deposited. So those three steps together allow for very dense circuits and uh, a lot of ease in manufacturing, higher yielding processes and uh, very critical uh, components to be realized today that weren't able to be realized uh, prior to ASAP. Yeah, the additive market is something I've been watching for many years now, and I am excited to sort of watch your trajectory because I think you guys ha may have the golden ticket. So, Tara, Tara, you're now the uh, VP of Marketing and Biz Development, Business Development at Veritech, and you and I have been friends and uh, partners in crime for a while coming from the print and circuit board industry. So I know you have a lot of depth of experience from that standpoint. So you can you tell us about um, sort of the enablers you see, what the trends are, and sort of what applications are driving the need for this technology? Sure. Um, you know, I think it, in all electronics, you know, the desire to be smaller, lighter, faster, um, that transcends all different markets. Um, and, and, you know, we have hit a barrier with subtractive etch at the 75 micron or possibly 50 micron trace in space. So I think this technology gives designers, PCB designers, um, many more opportunities to simplify the design. At 75 microns, the, um, the real solution is you have to go to a more complex design. You know, additional lamination cycles, stacked or staggered microvias. You know, and this technology really allows you to kind of change the game and rethink the way that you're going to lay out the board. Um, so for that reason, you know, if we look at markets and things like that, you know, we see it across the board in all markets. I would say some of the heavy market leaders uh, for this technology we're seeing with the DOD, the DOD primes, um, definitely semiconductor and semiconductor test companies, and um, also medical you know, there's a unique advantage that we'll talk about a little bit later, I think, in the podcast, um, but we have some great things to offer the medical industry as well. You know, there are, there are a couple benefits to this. Obviously, the, the, the miniaturization is a big piece, but um, you talked a little bit about signal integrity. Uh, is that something perhaps... Tara, you want to talk about, or should we throw that one over to Harris? Let's throw that one over to Harris. <laughs> I can okay. I can talk about it a little bit. I, actually, I've been exposed to signal integrity quite a bit in my past lives uh, as a silicon uh, or semiconductor um, uh, person. We uh, had an analog company that was doing very low noise analog circuits on um, on CMOS, and I did some gallium arsenide work and other things. And so, signal integrity, uh, low noise is sort of near and dear to my heart. And I, a lot of the transitions that uh, the semiconductor industry has have gone through in the past where they've had to use much better modeling techniques to model uh, coupling and noise and uh, uh, impedance and moreover variations in all of these things, uh, the semiconductor industry had to go through uh, a couple of decades ago. In, in the past, there was a common uh, assumption that CMOS couldn't go above a gigahertz because uh, the very tight spaces and narrow lines would give you too high of an insertion loss and too much noise and too much loss from the conductive substrate. And of course, those all turned out to be wrong. CMOS can go to very high frequencies. And, and I see similar kinds of assumptions being made in the printed circuit board world where people are worried about, well, if I make very high density lines, will my insertion loss kill me? And will you know, will I get too much noise coupling and things like that? And some of the same answers that the semiconductor industry uh, learned will apply here. And then there will be some new answers for the printed circuit board industry as well. So uh, we are working with signal integrity experts to write a series of white papers on how to optimize um, for signal integrity, for lower insertion loss, for better noise coupling, for better uh, ground and power distribution when you have access to a much higher density uh, interconnects. 
And so we'll be releasing those over the next several months. Uh, they're from people that uh, most people in the circuit board industry know well. And so we're really excited about that. Um, Tara has also started some designers working with this to uh, capture their um, uh, sort of knowledge on how to utilize this technology. Tara, I want to ask you more about that. Before I do, Mike, I wanted to ask you about um, what type of materials can the Veritech technology be used on? It, you know, these sound like mostly high-performance applications, so FR4, Teflon, what are the limitations or capabilities there? Yeah, so we're working right now with a number of uh, standard epoxy type uh, substrate materials. We're also working with some of the more advanced uh, high frequency materials, including the PTFE type materials that are, that are uh, Teflon based, um, as well as uh, just more standard high speed materials, uh, packaging materials, um, and, and a few flex materials uh, for some of our customers. So there are a number of uh, materials that we've already proven out, already developed uh, very good performance parameters on that our uh, licensees and customers are adapting right now for their processes. I should add maybe that in addition to all the different types of materials uh, with different dielectric constants and loss tangents, uh, we're also looking at very thin materials and very narrow lines mm -hmm. and very thin materials go together since if you want to maintain, for example, a 50 ohm impedance, um, and you want to go to a very thin material, you will need a very narrow line. Moreover, you will need a very precise dimensional control on that narrow line. And, and there's some signal integrity benefits there too when you're not going to thin materials and you're using a wide line as a controlled impedance line. The fact that you can control the width to plus or minus one micron allows you to control the impedance very precisely as well. Terry, I wanted to circle back and ask you about the work that you've been doing with a, a friend in common. We have Thomas Chester of uh, Chester Electronics Design. Um, you did some interesting work with him recently. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? I can. Yeah. So this is the first in a series of um, redesign opportunities that we're going to do. Really one of the things that we're looking to do with the Veritech is not only license the technology to the PCB fabricators, but also help shorten the learning curve for PCB designers to start using this technology and to understand the implications and how to best apply it. So we're working with Thomas. Um, I'll just tease you just a little bit on it. We took a Altium um, reference board um, and selected one to start with. It was relatively simple to get us started and we redesigned that and rethought that with um, the ASAP process. So we were able to see you know, a reduction in layers um, which is great, and we'll show all that in the example. Um, but as importantly, we're following Thomas's thought process and decision making as he went through that redesign effort, um, mm. and kind of evaluating those decisions as we went through it. And so, you know, we do this and we learn, and we're going to move on to the next one. And like I said, just a, a nice series um, to help designers really understand what to do with this. And and you know, there was that was a teaser for the one with Thomas, but I wanted to share another example too that really shows you know, the design simplification that, that we're starting to see with mm. um, using the ASAP. Um, there's one that we worked with um, in a design mode to redesign with ASAP that started out as you know, pretty complex PCB design. It was three and three, or 75 micron and 75 micron trace and space. Um, it was 12 layers and it had three lamination cycles. So that's a pretty tough board. We redesigned that with ASAP. Um, not all the layers were ASAP. So that's another thing to point out is you can use ASAP layers in mm. combination with subtractive etch layers. So okay. we redesigned this board. We shrunk the overall size. So the number of pieces on the panel tripled. We reduced the layers from 12 layers to eight layers, um, which is great all on its own. But I think even more interesting is we reduced the lamination cycles from three lamination cycles to one. So just a huge simplification wow. um, in that design, which of course increases the reliability, which I think is something and, that everybody's looking for. And the cost, <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. I'm sure there'll be cost implications as well as reliability. That's impressive. So Tara, with all this exciting work you're doing with designs now, where will you be publishing? 
We're looking forward to publishing the data from the project that we did with Thomas out on the Altium platform as he'll walk through that Altium reference board redesign. That's exciting. So uh, for our podcast listeners or uh, viewers, we'll make sure to keep you up to date on that. And as we have more information, I'm sure you'll either be seeing it through some of our publications, blogs, or someplace else. So stay tuned for that. Um, lastly, Tara, before we wrap up here, I wanted to ask about adoption. As I said at the beginning of the show, you guys have been on sort of a tour de force. So I wonder um, where is a Veritech technology available now as far as PCB fabrication goes and, and sort of what's your roadmap for licensees of the technology? Sure, we have three commercial PCB fabricators that are currently licensed in North America. Um, that is Calumet Electronics, American Standard Circuits, and FTG. Um, and our plan is, you know, over the next few months and through the end of the year, we will probably add another three to four um, licensees. Again, Exciting. primarily in North America for now, but we're looking forward to right. expanding that network. Excellent. Well, again, for our listeners, I will definitely put links to those uh, circuit board fabricators in the show notes so you can go learn more or if you'd like to do that, uh, try that technology, you'll know where to go, ask questions and get some more information. Well, any final thoughts of Aerotech team before I let you go? No, Judy, thank you very much for having us today. We really enjoy meeting you and working on these projects with you to get the word out about more advanced printed circuit board designs. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Thank you all. Thank you. To our listeners, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed learning about this new breakthrough technology at Averitech. Again, don't forget about the show notes, and we'll keep you posted as, as they make more inroads into the industry. Thanks for joining us this week. Until next time, remember to always stay on track. Music.